Well, good morning, church family. I, I hope you remember to change your clocks forward one hour Sunday morning. To, uh, two o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning, you're supposed to move your clocks forward. If you don't do that, you're going to be late for everything. Uh, anyway, last week we looked at the, the mission of Jesus, and this week we'll look at Luke chapter 6 to study the ministry of Jesus. So let's pray. Lord, in this uh, distracting world we are in right now, I pray that you'll help us to concentrate fully on, on your word. Help, help me, Father, to share what's on your heart with uh, folks in this Sunday school lesson. I pray that you'll show us what your what your ministry on this earth was, uh, was about. Lord, we love you so much, and we're so grateful for your grace and mercy and, and the, the fact that you can bring, that you do bring peace into our lives and the in the midst of turmoil that we find this world in today. Lord, guide and direct our thoughts. Help us, Father, to just to get settled in our hearts and minds what what you are were about when you were on this earth, but also what we are supposed to be about. Guide us now in this time of study in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as you know, Matthew 7 is called the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, while Luke 6, some people call it the Sermon on the Plain. Uh, there's some disagreement as to whether these were different events or are the same event with different perspectives. I think I find myself on the uh, on the side of it's the same of the same reporting. It's just a, a different uh, a different point of view. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Regardless, in, in this passage in Luke, uh, Jesus shows his power and his authority to to perform his Bible. He showed it by performing some huge miracles. The uh, feeding of the 5,000. We know that he raised the dead. He, he did some amazing things, many, many things that they aren't even recorded. Even. He also taught his disciples his expectation uh, that the disciples would live in a manner that reflected their being, that they were being in the right relationship with the Father. That that relationship is what changes everything. He he changes our lives so that may experience joy and peace and the favor of God as we love others as Jesus loves us. Uh, let's begin our study in Luke chapter 6 today, verses uh, 17 to 19, where it says, And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem, which is in the southern part of the country, and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, which was in the north uh, northwest part of the country, who came to hear him, and he healed all, or to be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed and healed them all. For power, his power went out from him and healed them all. There's, there's an interesting point that I think we, we sometimes overlook, and it's back up a few verses in the same chapter, uh, verse 12, where it says, Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Wow, do, do I ever fall short there? If, if the Son of God felt the need to spend time with his Father, surely I need to prioritize spending time, quality time with him. Uh, Jesus continued in prayer all night. What was he talking about? What was he praying about? We're not privy to, to that, but we know that after this long season of session of prayer, he, he finalized a list of apostles. He, he, he might have spent time asking for some relief uh, when it came to Judas, because he knew what Judas was going to do to him. Uh, I, we don't know. It, it, it's, uh, that's, that's immaterial for this study. Uh, I would even say that the first point of Jesus' ministry, and this is, this I think is key for me anyway, the first point of his, uh, his ministry was to focus on the essential nature of prayer. I'm going to chase a rabbit here and, and just remind us that Prayer in, in Jesus' day was very mechanical and very, uh, it was often, uh, it was memorized stuff that uh, they would repeat over and over again, uh, 
rep in a very repetitious family manner. And, and he came to show us that, no, that's not what we're about. It's not about this uh, trying to check box or check mark things that we, we say to God, but it's about talking to God from our heart to Him and, and sharing with, with Him what's on our heart. Uh, being real, and, and Jesus was real in His prayers before God. Every, every time He prayed, uh, He prayed earnestly, and, and, and He was sharing what was on His heart. Anyway, we see from our, our focal passage back in uh, verses 19 to 22 or 3, or whatever it was, that a huge number of needy people from all over the country uh, they, they came to hear him and to be healed by him. All of them were healed. It was amazing. It, it actually pointed that out in this passage. <clears throat> Notice the fact that it required supernatural power to heal the, these special needs, the, the unclean spirits and, the, and some, some, very, some very tough things to, to heal. And it's, these folks just wanted to be near him and to hear him and to touch him. Uh, they wanted to touch him, and their faith in him resulted in what, what was stated in this passage. Virtue went out of him. Virtue means spiritual, supernatural power. Again, Jesus' power and virtue came as a direct result of his spending time with his father the night before. Well, look at another place in uh, Mark 1 verses 35 to 39. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everybody or everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, Let us go into the next towns that I, might, that I may preach there also, because for this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. Now, now this passage, along with Mark 6, shows another point of Jesus' ministry, to preach and deliver folks from their sin and, and their sickness. Sin being the worst sickness there is. Look in John's letter about his purpose that he, that he stated in 1 John 3, verse 8, the last part of that verse. For this purpose... The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now the way he did it was by dying for us, but what he what he did was so that he could destroy the works of the devil. That's that's and, and preaching truth and sharing truth and, and showing proof of truth throughout his ministry was was one of the major points of his ministry. So the ministry of Jesus was was simply stated as this, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Well, so let's move along now in our, our Luke 6 passage, verse 20 to 23. It says, Then he lifted up his eyes toward his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. So here Jesus is teaching some very different life lessons for us. He switches gears entirely, but... These are life lessons he's teaching his disciples and, and me. It, it, his ministry was to teach us that our attitudes are essential. We, it's not about checklists. It's about our heart's desires and, our, and, and where we stand before a holy God. We're being taught some of the same things taught in, in the Sermon on the Mount. That's why I think this is the, the, same, uh, the same event from a different perspective. We are to be very different from the world, where pride and, and position are viewed as, as a powerful character trait. It's a good thing in the world to be prideful and to be, uh, to be powerful. We, on the other hand, are to be humble and dependent on the Holy Spirit to, to not just lead us, but, to, but to, to allow us to give Him control 
over our attitude so that, so that we can experience the joy and the reward of walking with the Lord. Look at these passages about how our attitude should be. Just a couple of them. First in Matthew 20, verse 16 says, So the last will be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. And again in Luke 13, 30, he says this, And indeed there are, there are last who will be first, and there are first who will be last. We're not, seek, we're not to be seeking first place in, our, in social situations and especially spiritual, uh, in the spiritual arena, church. We're not to draw attention to how special we are, but to point everything, everyone to Jesus because he's the reason that we are what we are. Since it's, it is by his grace, it's the only thing that makes us any different from, from the world. When we are focused on the right things, there is a really important upside. Look at the book of Revelation chapter 7, verse 16 to 17. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Essentially, Jesus, the, the Lamb talked about there, will take care of every physical need, every comfort thing that we will need, every emotional need that we have. That's, that's coming someday, and I'm so grateful for that. Can, can you imagine a time when you will never be hungry or thirsty? Or, or, and, and just to know, just to have that knowledge, that certain knowledge that you're being shepherded, by the only one who cares for your soul. And then having no more tears. I, I, I Recently I started working part-time at, at a funeral home. But, uh, tears are, are an important part of uh, grief. But in this day, Jesus is saying, at some point, I'm, when, I'm in, when I'm in control of everything here, there will be no more tears. They won't need any more funeral directors. They won't need any more uh, funerals. It's it's an awesome thing. I can only imagine. Well, let's finish our study in Luke chapter 6. Let's look at 27 to 31. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Now he's gone to meddling now. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away from your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also must do to them. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful picture that he's painting here. He, 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 we're to do likewise. We're to, this is the golden rule that's found in Luke. He, here's where the rubber meets the road, folks. This, this is where it's tough. This is, uh, a lot of the things we study about God's Word, we can say, yeah, I can, I can do that. That's, I've got, I've got this. But here's the one that we probably struggle with the most. It's, it's this mindset that we all are born with, that I must, I must get even. I must, I, I must take revenge if somebody does me wrong. Jesus says, don't do that. He says, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Whoa, that's tough. And then he says, bless those who curse you. That's, that word bless doesn't just mean, well, bless is hard. It means you, do, you go out of your way to help somebody who has wronged you. And pray for those people who spitefully use you. Now, there's a secret to life here. Well, I'm chasing a rabbit here, but this secret is when I'm praying for someone, when I'm praying good for someone who's been evil to me, I can't, I can't hate them. I mean, I, it's impossible for those two things to coexist. For me to pray earnestly for someone who's done me wrong, 
is a is a place that I, I can't then sit back and say, well, I just don't want anything to do with them. I, I want them. I want the worst for them. I, it can't happen. Again, where the rubber meets the road, love your enemies. Now, to me, this is the most last of the ministry points we're going to look at today. But we are to have an altogether different attitude about conflict. Now, that's that's just something you have to choose to want to do. Basically, the world would tell us that we should get even at all costs, not insisting on keeping. Uh, not in, how can I say this? We should, we should. The world wants us to seek credit for the good things that we do. Jesus said, "Don't, don't go there. Don't, don't worry about that." And He's also saying, "Don't place blame uh, for everything that happened. Don't try to get even." This is probably one of the hardest lessons for us to learn and, and to put into practice. Yeah, we get a good head knowledge of it, but it's tougher when we have to put it in, into action. Uh, but, but this is what a regenerated soul will begin to do, kicking and screaming sometimes, and will be searching for ways to bring peace into this, this world of turmoil that we are in. So Jesus' ministry was more about changing hearts and minds than it was about bringing about some utopian Jewish kingdom that a lot of folks were expecting the Messiah to bring. His expectation was, I'm going to bring grace and mercy into this world that is void of grace and mercy. His message and ministry was in constant conflict with the thinking of, of that day, and it still is, quite frankly. Being a Christian re requires me, us, to ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us, not just once in a while, not daily, certainly not weekly, continuously, so so that we can be the lighthouse of peace that this world is dying to see. It's the ministry of Jesus was to bring through through, <laughs> through turmoil because everything he said brought turmoil into the world because nobody wanted to see it that way. But his his ministry was to bring into us the objective to bring peace into the world. And how can we do that? By sharing the message of Christ. You're not, you're not going to be appreciated for it, but one by one, little by little, more and more folks will come to know the, the truth of who Jesus was and is, and they will change from the inside. We can't force people to be nice to us, but the Holy Spirit can radically transform folks. And that's his ministry, to radically transform from within. Uh, our attitudes, our, uh, our, our prayer life, our, uh, our view of how we treat other people. That's his ministry, and that's what he wants us to examine in our own, own lives. The world, again, the world is dying to see the normal Christian at work. They, they may they may resist it, but their their hearts are hungry to see that in us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your ministry of peace, your ministry of uh, grace and truth and mercy, for your ministry of prayer and how we deal with conflict. All that, Father, I pray that you'll help us to examine in our hearts to to see how we. How, how, how are we doing, Father? How am I doing? How am I measuring up to what you're expecting to see in me? I pray now that you would bless this, uh, this lesson, that, you, that there would be some who would see words or hear words that, that they have perhaps have uh, neglected or have uh, missed or, or whatever, Father, but help them to see their need of a Savior. And if, that, if they already have trusted you, help them to examine their hearts. And how, how, how are they doing, Father? Help them to see that. Now, Lord, as we worship today, this week, help our worship to be pure and holy. And not just exciting to us, but life-changing for us. 
they are worthy. Our worship be worthy because only you are worthy of our worship. Thank you for my staff, for the folks that, that, uh, that serve this church are so important to us, and I thank you for each one, the special gifts that they each one bring to the to, to this this fellowship. I pray that you'll help each one to have that vision for, for what needs to be done and, and share that vision with us and, and help us to have the courage and strength to, to follow that vision wherever you will wherever you lead we'll go. Lord thank you for everything you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Well next week we're going to be looking at the identity of Jesus and it's going to be found in Luke chapter 9 verses 18 to 26. Ah, look outside. I'm, I'm sitting over here looking at the ocean and enjoying that. There's a nice breeze coming through the windows. You might not have heard anything I said today because of that, but spring is nearly here. If you don't believe that, just go out and shovel the pollen out of the way. Uh, be glad when that's over. Anyway, I hope, I really hope that you will subscribe to this channel. Uh, be sure and like and subscribe or share this this lesson. And uh, we'll see you next week. May God bless you richly. In his name be.